and welcome to my YouTube channel where I discuss being autistic from the perspective of being autistic. Everybody look, Jenna Marbles is here today. Oh yeah. But also, Commodore's here. Look at this big boy. Look at this big boy. Oh, he's purring. He says yes. Everybody's here for me. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I have been just whew, with my pain lately and my sleep. It's just been an absolute nightmare. I've literally just been barely a person, but here I am. <laughs> just gotta keep on chugging. And with that, we're going to talk about ex executive dysfunction. So bear with me because apparently I can't talk today. And Commodore thinks that he needs to lay in my notebook. Excuse me, sir. So executive dysfunction is described as a term to describe faults or weaknesses in the cognitive process that organizes thoughts and activities, priorities, tasks, managing time efficiently, and making decisions. So executive dysfunction isn't only prevalent in autism, it is also in pretty much every neurodiverse condition. I personally struggle with it quite a bit. It can make me have so much trouble switching tasks. And it could be something that seems like such a simple task. Um, but people that don't experience it, that are neurotypical, tend to label it as procrastinating or as being lazy. And it tends to be very negatively thought of against us that have this um but it's more than that it's more severe than like I just don't feel like doing it it's more than that and it's hard to describe if you don't know that you have it so for the longest time like I everybody just thought I was being extremely lazy or just not wanting to do things but it wasn't that it's just my mind wouldn't let me and it was hard to communicate that when I didn't understand what was going on and that it wasn't normal. Um, well, normal. Um, it's when the signals in my brain are telling me to get up and get dressed or to do another task, like get up and eat. But my body and my brain don't want to connect. So my brain keeps telling me, okay, you need to get going. It's time to get ready. It's time to get ready, but I can't move. Um, and then eventually I will forget about it. And then I lose track of time and then I'll end up late, <laughs> whether it's to the doctor or to get ready for work. Um, and it's very upsetting because it doesn't matter how early I will get up in the morning. Okay. I could get up with like like three hours before I'm supposed to go somewhere and this will still happen and I will still be late. Um, sometimes I do manage to have good days where everything's going just fine and smoothly and I'm able to do everything just fine. But it's kind of hard to get people to understand that don't experience it. Um, it can also make me very indecisive, which for a lot of people, that can be extremely frustrating. Um, I am that typical girl meme that gets spread around where it's like, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. And it just keeps going around like that for like hours. Um, and then I get stressed out because I don't know what I want for dinner or what I want to watch that night. Um, and it's very stressful if you have another person in the situation around this. Whereas like if I'm on my own, 
and my executive dysfunctioning is being really bad like there's nobody there to be like naggy or to be like why are we watching this show for like the fifth hour straight you know what I mean um or why haven't you ate yet <laughs> um but luckily you know I have people in my life that makes it a little easier but there still is sometimes where it can be frustrating even for the people that know me enough to know what's going on so what for me personally helps is having set routines every night i put my clothes out for the morning so that way i'm not taking five hours to figure out what to wear because i will take five hours to pick out an outfit if i don't have them prepared um and a lot of people might think that's like why does it take that long to decide what to wear and it seems like such a simple task right but no, it's like, even when I am prepared, Midwest weather is like, oh yeah, no, it's going to be hot today instead of being 30 degrees in the wintertime. Um, <laughs> but I do that in the morning. So that way I'm not taking forever just to pick out an outfit and I'm prepared. Um, and if I don't do that in the morning, it completely messes up the rest of my morning. I have an exact schedule for my morning routine. So when I get up, go to the bathroom. Because yes, as I have found out, it's very common with us on the spectrum that um, sometimes we forget to go to the bathroom. Or, you know, so, or we can't, the executive dysfunction is taking over so much that we can't just physically make ourselves go get up to go to the bathroom. So as soon as I wake up, immediately I go to the bathroom. I eat my breakfast in the morning because if I don't eat then my blood sugar drops really low. Um, so I have my safe food breakfast. Uh, breakfast is the least stressful food time for me in the entire day. I have my breakfast sandwich. I have my chalky milk. I do that every morning before work. Um, after I eat I go upstairs and I get dressed and then I brush my teeth and, you know, get all clean and hygienic. And then I go to the car, pick out my music, which is usually the same exact album. Lately, it's Bo Burnham on repeat. And then I head to work. But if I have anything that goes wrong in my morning where my schedule gets well thrown, um, it can totally mess up the rest of my day. Um, and if that doesn't say I'm autistic, I don't know what does. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things where it's very important for me to have my schedule because if I don't, then executive dysfunction kicks in really hard and I have trouble getting going in the morning. And I have been, especially with my sleep apnea getting more severe in the morning, if I am not sticking to that schedule, I will fall asleep on the couch in the morning and then I'll wake up and I'm going to be late because I'm rushing then to try to get my schedule back in the play. Um, but also my morning routine can also get really thrown too. Like I said, my sleep apnea is getting worse. So some nights I'm not sleeping well whatsoever. I'll only have a couple hours of sleep. So my schedule can get thrown because I'm so extremely exhausted that like I just can't get moving and my brain doesn't want to work. Um, it could also be thrown whenever my pain's really bad. So if my pain is really severe in the morning, it takes me longer to get up because it hurts to get up and move. Um, and luckily I have a really good job situation right now where it's okay if I'm a little behind um they're really nice and they're okay with it and they it's not a big deal if I run a little behind um something that also helps me as well with my executive dysfunction whenever it's acting up is to have my boyfriend help me like navigate everything 
And I understand that maybe not everybody has a significant other who lives with them to be able to help them with this. It can also be a friend. Um, it could be a family member. Um, you, If you don't have any kind of closeness with anybody, which is understandable because sometimes whether it's we can't make friends close enough to help us with situations or our family is completely um, not helpful with us in our situations. Um, another good way to do this so that it can help you stay on task is to set alarms on your phone. So then you know there's set alarms for like, okay, I need to eat now within the next like couple minutes or my morning is going to get thrown off. Um, for me, my boyfriend helps me because I personally hate alarms. Um, if I have an alarm to wake me up in the morning, which I always do, especially if I'm working, um, I don't like loud sounds. So it wakes me up and immediately um, I'll be up and I turn it off immediately. I don't like the snooze button. Um, I don't like loud sounds. My phone is always on silent. <laughs> so um, I understand if that's not going to be the most pleasant way to stay on schedule for you. Um, and if that's not, there could be some kind of sound setting that could be like a more of a comforting sound, like maybe like a acoustic kind of song or a classical song where it's not so brash. Um, but yeah, my boyfriend knows very well about what my executive dysfunction will work up in. So he usually knows if he's working late and he only comes in have you ate yet. If I say no, he helps me figure out what to eat. Um, and he knows pretty much if he's home with me and it's our evening time, he needs to pick what we watch on TV because otherwise I will be stressing out for hours not knowing what to put on because sometimes, well not sometimes, but mostly I tend to binge watch and it's usually binge watching things that he is not into. So I have him do the picking so I'm not as stressed out and it's super helpful for me. Um, so if you have a loved one in your life, whether it's a friend or a family member that can help navigate your executive dysfunction as well, it does help quite a bit as long as it's a safe person. Like, I don't think I could ever have, um, certain people in my life do it because they'd probably stress me out more than they would be helpful. So I can totally understand that if you feel like there is not like a actual human to help you with that. Um, but like I said, there is, you could do alarms. Um, if you're able to get a animal, um, who is trained to help you with things, they do have animals that will help you know for medication reminders, um, that could probably help you remember to go get food. Um, I personally really want to look into that at some point, um. Fortunately, I don't think Athena quite has what it takes to be in a and a service animal. I love her to death. She's super smart, but I don't think she has the mind to like stick to these tasks and be more helpful. So I'm hoping maybe in the future to find a dog that I can have that I can take places, especially grocery stores where I'm the most um prone to having meltdowns and panic attacks so but if you have that at a hand it, I would absolutely suggest it um not only would you have the animal for comfort but also they'd help you remember to do things and it's beautiful to see if you watch any videos on service animals like the things that they're like, capable of are amazing and in the meantime, I do like to think that out of all my animals, Commodore is the most service animal qualified and kind of like the unofficial animal, service animal for me. 
unfortunately, uh, they don't really let you have cats in the grocery store. Um, I'm sure that, like, you could, but for service animals, they tend to prefer to use dogs because if something were to happen where you need, like, the animal to go get help or anything, cat's not really gonna go get help. Commodore would just stay on me and lick boots, <laughs> which is very helpful at home, but like in the public, it's, it's not as helpful, is it? Oh, but he is a wonderful comfort. He's really good for more so the emotional side of anything. I, he does help my pain too. I watched a video last night about animals and that purring has some kind of healing element and I absolutely believe that because whenever I'm in pain and he's sitting on me and he's purring or Milo's on me and he's purring like I it's sometimes better than the pain medications that I have they're just wonderful animals Athena god love her she's <laughs> it's sometimes stress inducing but you know, even she can be sometimes helpful at the house, but yeah. So there we go. Train of thought, kind of getting a little off the wheels, but um, so we discussed executive dysfunction today. Um, like I said, this is not restricted to just autism. This is literally anything on the neurodivergent umbrella. So it's also extremely common ADHD as well. Um, so are you struggling with any of these things? Um, feel free to look up any other things on the internet about it. I highly suggest it because I had no idea about it until um, I started learning more about it in my autism groups and Googling it and looking into it. And I always, didn't really understand why I would just kind of turn into a pile of goo on the couch and no matter how many times I would tell myself to do something I could not do it um and it can be very stressful especially when you're surrounded by people that just think it's a laziness because I have dealt with that a lot over the years um so let me know down below if you relate to this and how much you feel like this is affecting your life. I hope that in some way talking about this today has helped you. Um, and I will see you on the next video. Have a great day.